Now, time to move into a new section altogether. So this section is going to be involving adding and subtracting fractions, uh, in particular ones that have different denominators. Because if they had the same denominator, it would be very simple. We would just have to combine the numerators. Okay. Um, so uh, in this case, we're going to look at two different methods. So the first of the two methods is going to be when we have one item being a multiple of the other. So in that case, what we can do is we can multiply by four in this case, right? So in order so that they will match. And then once they do match, we can just subtract the numerators together, okay? And then reduce if, if necessary. So now here's another simple example where one is a multiple of the other. So we think about what number needs to be multiplied to make them equal and we add that on the top and bottom multi through multiplication. So we end up with 8 over 12 minus 1 over 12 which gives 7 over 12. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now the more exciting method comes from when we have numbers that are what we call co-prime, meaning that they don't share any common factors and one's not a multiple of the other in particular. So anyway, this is what I call my cross multiply method. So I'll, I'll describe how it works. So the first step is to multiply those numbers together. You get 8. Then you write the symbol that's in the middle, which is, happens to be a minus. And then we write the other cross multiply, which happens to be a 5 times 1 is 5. We divide by the product of the denominators, which is 10. So we end up with 3 over 10. And that's pretty much our answer. So let's practice that again over here. So we do 2 times 3, which gives 6. Then we write the middle symbol, minus. 5 times 1 is 5, and we don't forget to divide by the product of the denominators. Okay, So this is a nice, fast way of multiplying numbers that would otherwise take a while. So for this one, 4 times 12 would be 36. This time we would add, okay, and then we do the other diagonal, 25, and we divide by the product of the denominators, 60 in this case. So we'd end up with uh, 61 over 60. Now here we see another example of the old style where one is the multiple of the other. So we can multiply this by 2, top and bottom. We end up with 2 sixths and 2 sixths, which is 4 sixths. And then the reduce step, we know that 4 is 2 times 2 and 6 is 2 times 3. The 2's can be canceled, leaving 2 thirds. Okay. And sometimes you find ones that are sort of in between where this is not a multiple of each other, but they do have something in common. So let's explore what we would do for these. Now, on the one hand, we can use the cross multiply method. It will work, but we'll definitely likely have to reduce at the end, which is not a, you know, it's not that bad, but let's take a look at another option in case we don't like that option. So. This can be reduced to 3 times 2. This can be reduced to 2 times 4. And then you can see that they actually have a 2 in common. So what you can do is you can actually, uh, well, in this case, it really is very easy because the 3's cancel. Uh, but let's pretend as though they didn't, for argument's sake. So what we would do here is we would fill in what's missing. Okay. So the list here involves a 3 and a 2 and then a 2 and a 4. So what's missing on this side is a 4 right? And what's missing on this side is a 3. But we have to put that on top and bottom, okay? So now the complete list would be 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4, okay? So 2, 3, 4 is going to be our denominator, and then the top is going to read 12 plus 9. 12 plus 9, of course, is uh, 21, and the bottom here will be 24. And then this, yes, we would have to reduce 7 times 3, and this would be 8 times 3, the 3's will cancel. So 7 eighths. Okay. So what we learn here is that if there's a piece that's missing, we can just add that in top and bottom. All right. This will be an important concept for when we are using, uh, you know, um, uh, what do they call it? Polynomials, basically. When we're, when we're adding and subtracting polynomial uh, expressions, 
in other words, rational expressions, uh, we're going to require a similar kind of idea, but it's going to involve letters. Okay. So let's see what comes next. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to get into here. Um, maybe a slightly simpler version. But let's see, before we do these, let's do an even simpler one. So how about if we have 1 over x plus 3 over y. So let's see what we would get from this. So we'd get y from the first diagonal. Then we get a plus symbol that comes from the middle. And then we would get the other diagonal, which would be 3 times x. We'd have to divide by the product. So that's a pretty simple way of combining uh, two separate fractions into one uh, combined fraction. Okay. So now that we've seen it with monomials, let's look at the idea of having binomials in the denominator. Okay. So we have two separate terms. So anyway, we do this similar method where we cross multiply here. So that'd be four times and minus two. Then we put the symbol that's in the middle, minus. We do the other cross multiply. So we have seven times n plus seven. From here, we have to not forget to divide by the product of the denominators. Okay. Now, f to simplify this, of course, I cannot cancel the n plus 7 with the n plus 7. Why is that? Well, notice that this n plus 7, although locally it's part of a multiplication problem, which is a nice thing, uh, when you look a little bit further to the left here, you see it's part of also a subtraction problem. And that makes this entire thing a term. So since it's part of a term, it's not able to be canceled. Okay. It's an important point. So anyway, uh, we're not able to cancel that, but we can distribute to simplify. So let's see if that helps. 4n minus 8, and then we distribute also this minus 7 in here. So we get minus 7n, and then minus 7 with 7 is uh, minus 49. Right. Now we can foil out the bottom, or we can leave it as is. I like to leave it as is. And we can combine like terms on the numerator. So 4n with minus 7n, that makes minus 3n. And then minus 8 with minus 49, I believe that's minus 57. And at this point, sometimes you'll end up in a fortunate situation where you can actually factor this down. So here we could take out a minus 3, and I believe we're left with n minus 19, or n plus 19, rather. And the reason why I like to keep this bottom part factorized is because sometimes the, you'll see a cancellation occur at the very end. But even though you don't, in this case, a uh, factorized form is nice anyway. So this one happens to be a multiple of 3. And I can tell that by factoring out a 3, and I will get 5x plus 1. So now I just have to play the game of what's missing. Okay. So what's missing on the left side here is the 5x plus 1. So I put that on the top and bottom. Okay. And I make sure to FOIL, or in this case, distribute. So anyway, 6x times 5x, that will give you 30, uh, 30x squared. And then distribute the 6x to the 1, you get 6x. The denominator is 3 times 5x plus 1, plus 7. And the denominator, again, is 3 times 5x plus 1. That's the advantage of doing this, is that the denominators are now the same. So we only have to write it once. Um, and then this is already an acceptable solution. Yes, you could try to factor the numerator, see if anything cancels. But in general, uh, you won't get a lot of cancellations there. Yeah, we'll go here. So this one is instructive. It, it'll teach us something new. So and before we do that, I'd like to explore the following. If I have a situation like this where whereby these factors almost cancel out, right? They almost cancel out, but the only problem is that 
they have the wrong orientation, so to speak. They're sort of backwards in comparison to each other. Um, so the way that the, the, the way to do it is you cancel them and you just write a minus one. Okay, that's the punchline. But let's explore a little bit why that is, and you can skip ahead if you're not interested. But anyway, just to prove that this works. We could put a minus one on the top and the bottom. Okay, and then this minus one I'm actually going to distribute in. Well, actually, I'll do the bottom one. I'll distribute this minus one in here. Um, and then what I end up with is minus x plus one. And then I'm allowed to switch uh, the order of the terms as long as I keep the signs in front of them in front of them. So I have a 1 there and a minus x there. And then you can see that these cancel, just leaving this minus 1 behind. Um, so that's a little proof as to why that occurs. Now, why am I talking about all this stuff? Well, uh, if you look at these two denominators, right, we have that exact situation where one of them is a backwards version of the other. So what we can do is we can write this as minus 1 times this okay and yeah there's a few ways you could think about it you could think about it as factoring out a minus sign so that you would switch both signs I think that's a good way to think about it um, but anyway you can see what's missing so to speak now there's a few ways you can deal with this uh, for, for example if we take the approach we've been taking we would put a minus one here and here so let's stick with that for now and then we would have minus 2x, well, let's leave it as is, making it this, and then uh, here we'd have plus 9, and then since it's common denominators, we don't need to worry about that. Um, so anyway, we end up with 9 minus 3x, and if we distribute that minus 1, we'll end up with 6 minus 2x. I also switched the order, but just so, so that they would match. No big deal. Right. So now if we move down to this one, we can use a difference of two squares approach here. And then we notice what's missing in the other denominator is the a minus one. So we put that on top and bottom. Okay. Uh, so from here, right, we can write it as one fraction with the common denominator here. And the key thing to remember here is that this minus sign is going to need to distribute to both pieces of this numerator. So we end up minus a plus 1. Okay. Uh, then we can combine like terms. So the like terms are here. Right. So 3a with minus a is 2a. 1 and 1 is 2. And then we have the same plus 1, minus 1 over there. And then the last step is to check and see if we can factor anything out. In this case, we can. We factor out a 2 using GCF. And then what's nice here is that we end up with another cancellation of the A plus ones. And so our final result will look like this.